stage three of the Tour Down Under was set to be a scorcher. With temperatures hitting 42 degrees Celsius in South Australia, the decision was made to shorten today's race in the interests of safety. Just one small lap around Victor Harbour instead of three, which took roughly 25 kilometres off the total stage distance. This particular route is another nod to the history of this race. Stuart O'Grady won this stage in 1999, and Luis Leon Sanchez won from a 26-rider breakaway in 2005. Just two riders made the move today, however, add a couple of familiar faces for you. King of the Mountains leader Nick Lamini of Dimension Data and Scott Bowden of the UniSA team didn't have to work too hard to get away. They would be well advised to save their energy for the Category 1 ranked Penny's Hill, offering a juicy 16 King of the Mountains points to the first rider over the top. Bowden, with the summit in his sights, did everything he could to shake Lamini, but the South African was having none of it. He showed everyone why he's got the blue polka dots on his back, closing down Bowden's attacks and then launching one of his own to take maximum points. 10 kilometers later and the first intermediate sprint in Maiponga was taken at a canter by Dlamini. Behind though, attacks were launched in a fierce bid for the final bonus second. Bora Hansgrohe sprinter Sam Bennett was able to lock down third place, perhaps not for his own interests, but more to protect Jay McCarthy's position in the overall standings. Soon after, Dlamini eased his way back into the peloton, but Bowden elected to keep going, hydration being the word of the day in 44 degree heat. The peloton hadn't reeled in the Tasmanian by the time we reached intermediate sprint number 2 at 88 kilometers, but with only one rider out front now, there was a maximum of two bonus seconds still available to the bunch. Katusha Alpacin employed shrewd tactics to try and grab them, Jonathan Restrepo drawing out the attackers, then Mads Wirt Schmidt leading out Nathan Haas to grab second ahead of Jay McCarthy. With 20 kilometers to go, Bowden was caught as we lined up for another bunch sprint. Positioning was all important in the finale. Mitchelton Scott had done well to deliver Caleb Ewan towards the front. With a headwind on the finish line though, Ewan seemed unsure about going early, but during this hesitation, Elia Viviani, now in the blue of quick step floors, made a searing acceleration further down the field. He was at top speed by the time he passed Ewan and took an impressive victory in Victor Harbour. Sunweb's Phil Bauhaus took second, with Ewan having to settle for third on the day. It's not easy to come in January with the good condition, so I think I never win uh, like like here in the early season like that. So uh, that's a good thing. So I do a good winter. The feeling with the team is good, and uh, yeah, I feel really, really lucky to be to be here and to take this win. As a consolation, Ewan retains the Oka jersey, but admitted today's sprint could have worked out better. Like in hindsight, it's probably a, a finish that you're better off coming from behind, um, as I did last year. But um, yeah, you know, like I said, I can't fault my team. They, they were absolutely perfect and they did exactly what I asked them to do. And yeah, it was just uh, my stuff up in the end. Here's a closer look at the GC standings. Still very close at this point as the race moves tomorrow to the first of two major days for the general classification. Despite the heat, the route remains unchanged, although the start time has been moved a little earlier in the day to try and keep things a little cooler. To catch all these race reports first, you can subscribe to GCN by clicking on the globe on screen, and to catch up on all the action from Stage 2, click here.